Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to work with automatic selection tools. Now, thus far, we've been using some of the traditional selection tools like the marquee or the uh, lasso tool. In this case, we're going to switch down to the fourth group down and we're going to work with the magic wand. I have here this picture of a girl in front of a uh, pink background. It's a fairly consistent background, but it's not one solid color. Now, the automatic selection tools like the magic wand and the quick selection tool take into account what you're selecting. It actually is reading the image. So in this case, if I were to take this uh, magic wand and use it in the very corner here to say, hey, select the pink, this one pink color, you'll see that it does a pretty good job of selecting the pink, although it missed from here inward. Now why did it do that? It actually missed it because it only selects 32 values away from the color I chose. So I chose this darker of the pink up here. It didn't quite make it all the way to here. These values are more than 32 away. Had I increased that to say 64 and I'm going to deselect, select, deselect and I'm going to click it again, you see it got further. I'm going to leave it at 32 because it actually is a good thing in this case and I'm going to deselect once again. So I select here in the corner. These tools have the same addition and subtraction and intersection systems as these other selection tools. So to add this part in, all I need to do is hit the shift key. Now, if you're looking at yours and following along and you notice that this little area down here is not selected, that's because you might have contiguous turned on, which is the default. So I'm going to turn back on and show you what that looks like. I'm going to deselect using the shortcut, Control D, and I'm going to show you again. I'm going to select this part, I'm going to hold down Shift, and you'll see it didn't quite make it in here. And that's because contiguous stops the selection from going through one color to get to another version of that selection. It's kind of like the continental United States versus Hawaii. We can't cross the ocean to get to Hawaii. So whenever you're working and you have that situation, you just want to check uh, off contiguous and then when you hold down shift somewhere, it will go back in and select those pinks as well. So now that we have our background selection done, we can switch to selecting the foreground object, which is this girl. Now, to do that, you just go select and inverse. That does the opposite of whatever your selection is. So uh, it's a very common tool to select what you don't want in order to select what you do want. So I click inverse and now she's selected. Now let me show you what this looks like if I were to just copy and paste it right now. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste it and just show you what it looks like. It's really rough. It doesn't look good around the edges of these hairs. These little fine hairs aren't selected. Over here it looks like a, she was just bitten by a dog up here in the hair. And that's that's not like uh, how we're trying to do this. So I'm going to step backward, control alt Z. And what we want to do is refine the edge of our selection. And all of the selection tools, regardless of which one you selected with, you have this option for refine edge. See, it's on all of them. See. Anyway, you go to refine edge. And when you're first presented with fine, refine edge, you'll probably see it as on white. And while that does show you, you know, how awful your selection was, right, you really can't uh, get a lot of information from it because, you know, you can't see what the original picture is. So instead, switch over to overlay mode, which is the V key if you want to jump over to it. And what I normally do is I will check a smart radius and bring that out. And basically what that does is that just extends out the selection a little bit uh, in a proper way. Uh, Photoshop's going to try and use color, contrast, uh, how blurry or focused the part is to determine where the edge might be. So you can actually extend that out to maybe like one pixel wide or maybe even a half a pixel. Next, you want to take a look at what these other things are. Now in our case, we're actually not going to use these in our image, but I do want you to see what they do. Smooth is going to make your selection look a lot smoother. And let me show you what that looks like. So, all right. So it makes it look a lot smoother along this edge. The uh, feather makes it blurry. So you'll see it kind of just fades away and becomes fuzzy. 
contrast, it actually acts more like a sharpening of it, like almost like the opposite of feather. Shift edge will make the edge sele selection go outwards a few pixels or go inwards a few pixels. This is actually very useful if for some reason your selection has like a little bit of a glow around it, like you just have one extra pixel. So I tend to use that to fix that type of situation. Now the big thing we really want to work with is this brush here. All right, You do have a zoom tool and a hand tool that you can use to zoom in and move around the image, but instead I'm going to be working with this brush. And the brush has two different modes, the erase and refine. Okay, the refine mode has a size up here, so I'm going to increase the size for this picture to around 100. All right, that's a good number. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to just walk around this hair, these little hairs. And you can see that these hairs actually are just, they're semi-selected. They're not quite, you can see how there's some hairs out there I need to get. So I switch back to that brush, and I'm just going to paint over it. Just kind of put a blob where those hairs are, and then let go. And look what happened. It just made them part of the selection. See how this looks different than this? Now, they're not exactly fully tan like her hair or her, you know, that sandy blonde. It's actually semi-pink. That's because those are such fine little hairs, they're actually semi-transparent. So what you want to do is just walk your way around the image, doing little bits at a time. That will help in case you need to undo, so you don't have to undo the whole thing. You can use your space bar to move around, so you don't have to switch to that or you can use the button on the tablet. And this is just going to clean up that edge. I'm going to get that pink out of there. Come around her face. You don't have to do too much on the face. It looks pretty good as it is. Okay. Uh, over here we definitely have to do some work. Let's see. You want to go from in the hair uh, around. That's the easiest is to go from in the hair around. And then notice there's a little clock or a little twirl over here that not really a clock, but it turns. And what it's doing is it's it's just working each time. It's it's analyzing everything and doing its magic. And you just kind of buff around all those little parts, and you see it just figures it out after a while, right? With each step, you're training Photoshop. You're saying, hey, Photoshop, check this out. Look here. Work closely here. All right. And then what happens is, in the end, you have this nice selection with all the little hairs perfectly done. Okay? Looks like I also have a little part over here I need to get that I missed. All right. No problem. A little bit right there. All right. So now I'll go ahead and zoom out. I'll just use the um, existing one there. I could use my tablet, I suppose. Anyway, so now we have this great uh, selection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to output to a new layer with layer mask. You actually have some different options. You can do a selection, and when you do that, it just makes uh, a selection. Now, it looks just like we had before, but the truth is some of these have been adjusted. Okay, this is not the same selection we had before. Okay, you can go right back into Refine Edge if you want. Uh, you can do a layer mask, and what that'll do is that'll just uh, create a layer mask here and hide the pink pixels. You can do a new layer, and so that would just like copy it. Let me show what that looks like. See, that's like doing a Control C, Control V. I'm going to step backward. And I'm going to refine edge again. So um, the new layer with layer mask, a new document obviously creates a whole new document, but I'm going to do a new layer with layer mask. And that's my favorite because what it does is it keeps your original there. It duplicates your layer so the entire image is still here, but it masks out the parts you don't want. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, in this case, we're actually not quite done. If you take a look at her hair, there are some problems. Some of the pink from the original image is coming through in the hair, and I don't want that to contaminate those pixels. So I'm going to step backward once again, Control-Alt-Z, and I'm going to step back into my uh, Refine Edge. I'm just going to jump on one of my selection tools and do my Refine Edge again. This time I'm going to choose Decontaminate Colors. Now what it does is it automatically outputs to a new layer with a layer mask. And it looked initially just like what we had before, but it's not. Let me show you what it's done. If I disable my mask by right-clicking on the mask thumbnail and disabling it, what has it done? It has repainted the very edge of her face and hair. 
What it's done is it said, okay, this is the part you refined. Let's take a look further into the object. So it looked further into the object and it said, okay, what's the color there? And they're like, okay, it's a tannish color, right? A sandy color in this case. So it ended up repainting all everything out here that sandy color. Notice what it did down here near the shirt. We have some blue. That happened because it looked further into the object here and painted it blue. And I'm not going to worry about that. You probably will never be able to see it. But you can see where it's looked further into the object to determine what color those semi-transparent wispy little hairs should be. And when you re-enable the mask, it ends up looking great. Now the last thing I'm going to do with this picture is I'm going to open up another picture. It doesn't really matter what. Um, let me see here. I have, I think this is it here. Yeah, I just got a picture of this beach here. And what I wanted to do was show you how to take this picture and put it into the other. So I'm going to return to the hair picture and I'm going to click the arrow tool, my regular old move tool. And I'm going to make sure I'm on the layer. You don't have to have anything selected. You just click and hold your mouse or drag the pen across the tablet. Do not let go. Okay, do not stop pressing. Hold, hold, hold. And you see it changes and switches to the other picture. And I'm still holding. Keep holding, holding, holding. And then you can let go. And there's her hair. Now, obviously this picture is way too big for this, but I'm just showing you how to drop it into another image. Uh, we'll learn more about how to transformations, how to do transformations and stuff in another video. That's it for this. Make sure you save it, and we'll see you next time.